This story of mine comes from perhaps the worst period of my entire life so far. I grew up privileged. Summers in the Hamptons and winters in the Bahamas kind of privileged. My dad was an investment banker, and a good one at that. So much so that mom never had to work after they got married. I had it all. Fancy private schooling led into what I thought would be a free college education. Well, not exactly free since dad was footing the bill, but I'd never be saddled with any kind of crippling student debt that would turn my peers into wage slaves for the rest of their lives. At least, that's what I thought was going to happen. Until the 2008 financial crash. A lot of other financial companies got government bailouts right out of the taxpayer's pocket, but my dad's didn't. For whatever reason, they didn't qualify, so he lost his job. Long story short, one day I was in college, living the good life. The next I was on the phone to my mom, being told I'd have to drop out and find a job if I ever wanted to be able to support myself, as they just didn't have the spare cash anymore. It was devastating. I'd never worked a day in my life before, and there I was, traipsing around town with a folder full of resumes, trying to find something, anything, to get some cash in my account. And that's how I ended up working at Burger King. It was really hard at first. Although I didn't necessarily feel like it, I obviously gave off some major rich girl vibes, as the rough, tough, working class staff members detected it immediately. They didn't go easy on me, not in the slightest. But if I'm honest... That's the best thing that could have happened to me. In the space of about three months, I learned the meaning of a hard day's work, and the more I threw myself into the challenge of full-time work, the more my colleagues started to respect and appreciate me. In the end, we were incredibly tight, and I still keep in touch with a few of them via Facebook and stuff, but anyway, now they have a bit of background, on with the story. So I was working the late shift one night, which is generally the hardest shift of the day. The manager only ever put the most competent, most capable workers on that shift, and I know it sounds dumb, but the fact that I'd proven myself enough to be put on that cycle was a huge compliment to me. We used to stay open until midnight on weekends, and at about 11.30, we get this pretty regular-looking dude coming in, standing there at the counter whilst perusing the menu behind me. I gave it my best. May I take your order, sir? He looks down at me, and without skipping a beat, he's like, two double cheeseburgers, please. I could have plugged the order into the register when he interrupts me with an addendum into his order. Could I have those without the bun, the bacon, or any cheese, and hold off on grilling them for me, would you? Thanks. I stopped plugging his order in and looked up at him. Excuse me? It took a moment for me to really process what he was asking for, and he smiled as he began to clarify what his order was. Is there a problem? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure we're allowed to serve raw hamburgers. It's against food safety regulations. You've heard of steak tartare, haven't you? Yet another guy who immediately detected something in my mannerisms or accent that suggested I was upper class. I didn't even justify it with a response. I just asked him to wait a second while I talked to my supervisor. So the supervisor comes out and basically tells the guy no, just like I had. Even if you can eat raw beef, it's just not something we're able to serve our customers, or that's what I thought anyway. Because as my super is talking to this guy, calmly explaining that as much as he's sorry, it's just not something we can do. The guy like rolls his eyes and pulls out a wad of high denomination bills from his pocket and is just like, how much would it take? Now the place is pretty much empty at this point, but all eyes are on this guy and his wad of bills. I'll never forget the moment my supervisor stopped talking all calm and professional before turning to me and telling me, go to the back and clean something. I was stunned. I knew the guy well enough to know exactly what he was doing. He was going to clear the floor of potential witnesses, then actually get this guy's order. I pretended to clean something, all the while spying on him as he collected two raw patties from the fridge and sort of went through the motions of cooking them, so that if anyone watched the camera's back, it would look like he had done his job to the letter. A couple of minutes later, he comes into the back, 
telling me to take over the register, but not before he slides a few crisp hundred dollar bills into my hand, telling me not to say a word to anyone and to just forget about what had happened before people start running their mouths about it. As far as the rest of the team knew, he had told the guy no, served him some regular burgers, then simply gone about the rest of his shift as normal. But I couldn't let it go. I had to get some closure, even if I had a few hundred bucks worth of tips. I had to know what this guy's deal was. So being the sly fox that I am, I ducked my supervisor and hit up the manager in his office, asking him if, since it's so quiet, it'd be okay if I took a cigarette break. He looks at me all confused, turning in his chair before saying, like, you don't smoke, do you? Uh, yeah, I just started. Stresses of the job. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but if you're entitled to your five minutes, just make sure you get your station covered. So I did. I got a buddy of mine to man the register, bummed the smoke off of one of the fryer guys, then stood out back trying to get a look at the guy as he headed for his car. So there's me, standing there, pretending to smoke while I pretend I'm not watching this dude climbing into his driver's side. Then the thought hits me. It's late. Stores might not be open. In fact, they definitely weren't open. And the dude probably wanted something to cook with, right? Wrong. I distinctly see him unwrap the dripping wet burger wrapper before he raised the raw meat to his face. He doesn't take a bite, not like I expected him to. In fact, it looks more like he's smelling the meat more than anything else. I really couldn't believe what I was seeing. Literally, though, I thought the perspective had me seeing something that I wasn't, so I made the awful decision to edge a little closer to the car, angling out so I could see through the driver's side window. All without considering that his side mirror would reveal me as the peeper that I was. And oh my god. The way he looked at me through that window... This wild look in his eyes after breaking from what looked so much like he was making out with that chunk of meat. He was furious, gunning his engine before ripping out of the parking lot as fast as he could move. I just tossed the cigarette, ran back inside, and went straight to the super to tell him what I'd seen. He only repeated that no matter what, I wasn't to tell a soul that we'd served him raw meat or those few hundred dollar bills would be the last money we ever got out of this place if the owner didn't opt to sue us too. We never saw that guy ever again, and no one ever found out about the raw meat we sold him. I don't suppose I was in any real danger, but it was definitely the scariest, if not the most disturbing incident I've ever had while working at Burger King. So a few days after my 19th birthday, a few of my buddies and I are rolling around town in one of our cars, passing bottles and generally getting up to no good. We find a spot to park up, have a few smokes and blast some music, hanging out and just messing around until long after the sunset. Eventually, once we get hungry enough, we decided to drive over to Burger King to get a bite to eat. Now, I'm pretty lit by that point, and I've been lying if I said I wasn't generally being a complete jerk here, but here goes. So the Burger King drive through is closed for some reason, so we park the car up, get out, and head into the restaurant. And at the head of this huge line was this giant ham beast who was in the middle of waving her arm flab around, making some animated complaint about her order. My drunk buddies and I proceeded to watch this ham beast making an absolute idiot out of herself for like 10 minutes straight, holding up the entire line until eventually she steps to the side to wait for her corrected order or whatever. Either way, the line starts to move again. Everyone is super livid at this hog lady for holding up the line and I could tell the workers behind the counter were less than pleased with her too. So by the time I get to the front to give my order, I'm feeling all cocky and righteous and for some reason, I had it in my head that if I made the workers laugh by roasting the hog lady, I'd get like a free meal out of it or something. So I say something to the effect of, May I apologize on behalf of humanity for the irate snuffling of my heavy friend here? No one laughs. They all just look pretty shocked, 
looking back and forth between the ham beast and myself, waiting for the aftermath. She turns red in the face and I expect her to explode on me. I'm ready for the black eye or whatever. It was worth it, just to hear my buddies cracking up behind me. But she didn't flip her lid. She didn't say a word. She just sort of stood there, steaming mad until the guy behind the counter appeared with her amended food order. Then she just sits down and starts eating her food. We get our food and sit down on the opposite side of the restaurant, and all the while my buddies are like, Come on, man, you burned her. Jeez, dude. But I'm looking over at her, because the ham beast is on her phone, just talking all quiet, but every so often she shoots us a little bit of a look with this big smug grin on her fat face. I don't know what I was expecting to happen, but why I thought I'd get away with it, I have no idea. Because the moment we walked out of that restaurant, we just hear from behind us, There he is. That one, right there. I look around, and she's pointing at me, the same smug grin on her face. Then, when I turn back, there's a gun in my face. I honestly can't remember what the dude was screaming at me, only that he was, but I know it was her husband. It's weird the little details you notice when something like that happens to you. I distinctly remember seeing the dude's wedding ring on a finger that was wrapped around the handle of a pistol. I'm not a gun guy, but that thing was an incredibly big pistol, like huge, and all I did was sort of zone out and look down the barrel for a few moments with this guy's screams ringing in my ears. It was only when he pushed it to my forehead that reality came back to me and hit me like a ton of bricks. I just remember shaking so hard that when the guy told me to get down on my knees, I could barely react. He screamed at me to get on my knees because I didn't deserve to die on my feet, and that line stuck with me even to this day. I've never been so scared in my entire life. If you notice, I haven't given my name or where this happened or when it happened. This is to give me enough anonymity to admit that just after I fell to my knees, and I mean fell to my knees, I just straight urinated my pants, which I didn't even know was really a thing. I mean, obviously I've heard about people being so scared they wet themselves, but I didn't think it could actually happen to people. But I suppose since I was full of booze and that large coke, there was plenty in my bladder to void. And void my bladder I did. Somehow, I had found a way to make a terrible situation even worse. Not only did I think I was about to die in a parking lot, while a whole restaurant full of strangers looked on in horror, I was about to die soaked in my own urine cowering and shaking on my knees outside of a freaking Burger King. He starts shouting other stuff at this point too, but I can't quite remember that either. I was just waiting for the moment my light switched off, a feeling like I'd fallen asleep real fast that I'd never, ever wake up from. I remember trying to shout something myself, something about how will someone please call the cops? or whatever, but fear is a powerful thing. I couldn't speak. I mean, it was like a nightmare come to life. One of those where you try to scream for help, but your voice just sort of dries up in your throat. The next thing I remember are my ears pricking up to the word cops being spoken by some bystander just out of my view. Then I hear the distinct voice of the ham beast repeating the word, only this time it's not me that sounds scared. It's her. I feel the tip of the pistol leave the back of my head, and by the time I summon the courage to look around again, I see the pair of them, ham beast and gun guy, screeching out of the parking lot in some battered old sedan, followed swiftly by the blaring sirens in the distance. It was only when I was giving my statement to the cops that I noticed my buddies were gone, and not only were they completely out of sight, so was the car so I had to be driven home to my parents' house in a freaking cop car, which clued them into the fact that I had been drinking, which to them was far more worthy of their attention to the fact I'd almost just been shot in a Burger King parking lot. They tried to ground me for like a month, but they didn't need to enforce it. I was too shaken up to leave the house for the first week entirely. Just be careful who you're talking to or trying to be funny. 
You never know who's psycho enough to put a gun to your head. I live five minutes away from two Burger Kings. When I worked cleaning cars on my own, I would walk on over to the larger one because they had a better card reader. I can't tell you how many times I couldn't pay for my food because the other Burger King's card reader would not accept my debit card. So, just to play it safe, I always went to the one I dubbed the Good Burger King. Anyway, I walked on over at the end of my short workday, enjoying some podcasts through my headphones. It should be noted that even though this fast food joint was right on the shoulder of the main road through town, I literally never saw anyone else in there, save for me and the employees. I guess it was bad timing. On the day in question, I ordered my usual bacon-filled meal and took a seat in the back corner. It was my favorite spot because the employees and anyone that might walk in couldn't really notice me. Whenever I go out to eat, I really don't like to be bothered. Now, this is when someone else actually walks in. Right off the bat, this is curious because I've never seen anyone else walk in here while I was there. He was a tall, way too thin white guy who, to be honest, looked like he just finished shooting up. He was very pale, sweaty, and agitated. I watched the guy from my spot very cautiously. He goes up to the counter with his left hand hovering over his lower back and he's shaking like crazy. As I look closer, I realize this guy has something hidden under his shirt. And that's when a feeling of danger comes over me. This guy was so sketchy to begin with, but now he had something to hide. The cashier asked what he would like, and I kid you not, this guy gropes the thing that's under his shirt and starts shaking more. Then I can hear him stutter like he can't figure out what to say. After a few seconds of watching the poor cashier being creeped out, the guy slams his right hand on the counter and just says, give me a number two. His hand stops shaking, and he finally lets go of the thing under his shirt. He stands there, arms crossed and shaking his head constantly, waiting for his food to come out and when it does, he yanks the food from the employee's hands and walks away. I hear the employee get mad and cuss at him, but the that before. I don't know what happened to me the night before, but after that, experience. I won't be going back for a while. The doctor told me that it could be caused from blood rushing back to my head too quickly, and I do kind of remember feeling a bit lightheaded a few moments before I blacked out. But still, that does not explain the figure I saw when I was completely aware and awake sitting at that table eating my food. So this isn't exactly my story, but it's my boyfriend's. He works at a Burger King a block or two from our house and has told me of multiple accounts in which weird things have happened. For background info, he works early morning shifts before the sun has a chance to come up, which only makes this account creepier. One time, another worker there thought she saw a little girl at the back of the kitchen. Thinking some kid sneaked behind them, she went to go over and check who it was. But when she got there, she didn't see anyone. The little girl was gone. Since then, there's been multiple times where the cups would fly out at the employees or things have been knocked down from the shelves. Sometimes the workers' names get called out to them from the very back of the building where the storage closet is. But if they go back to investigate to see who's calling for them, there's nobody ever there, but the voice always comes in the form of another coworker. A fairly recent one was when my boyfriend was working in the freezer area. He heard the loudest noise, as if metal pipes had fallen. When he went to go check it out, there was nothing on the ground. He couldn't think of anything in the world that could have made that sound, and it spooked him out for the rest of his shift. There's been multiple sightings by different people of a little girl hiding behind the soda aisle in the middle of the dining area or somebody catches a glimpse of her around the corner. But by far the creepiest thing to happen in my opinion is that one of the employees started catching glimpses of a little girl at their own home, as if the entity itself that's been haunting the restaurant has followed him home. That would be terrifying. This happened during summer when I was seven. I'm an 18 year old female now. My mother was always working so I was often left with my grandmother. She would always take me to eat and after if I was good, she would take me to the park. I usually got to pick where we ate so I chose McDonald's. I was sitting down eating my happy meal and my grandma got up to use the bathroom. As soon as she left, a man in his late 20s or early 30s sat down next to me and asked me if I wanted to come play a game. I 
Being the seven-year-old I was, said yes. He said it was a special game and that I couldn't tell anybody. At this point, my grandma was returning from the bathroom and started yelling at the man to get the hell away from me. He ran out the door and I got in trouble for talking to strangers. We still ended up going to the park where I saw the man again. I was on the monkey bars and he asked me if I still wanted to play. Now I was starting to get a bit creeped out. I told him I wasn't supposed to talk to strangers and that my grandma was waiting for me. He said that if I won the game, I would get a present. I asked him where the present was and he said it was in his car and that I should go with him to get it. I said no and started to run. He grabbed me and I started screaming. My grandma heard me and came running. She saw the man and got out her mace. He let me go and my grandma sprayed him in the eyes until he was screaming. She called the cops on him and he was arrested on the spot. We later found out he was a registered sex offender and a child molester. I'm 14 years old and I live in Salt Lake City, just for a little background, and no, I am not a Mormon. Not that I have anything against Mormons or anything, I'm just saying. Anyways, the story goes like this. One day when my sister and I were young kids, about 10 years ago, we went to eat at McDonald's. As most kids do when they go to McDonald's, we love to play in the playland. So as we would always do, we played in the playland with my dad watching over us. After a while, my dad noticed a man in the playland taking pictures on his phone. He was a grown man, who I believe was somewhere in his late 20s. My dad was creeped out by this, so he confronted the man. My dad asked why he was in there, and the man replied by saying he was with his daughter in the playland. My dad told him to get out, as he was a grown man. The man then refused. The two of them got into an argument. My dad eventually punched up on the playland where the man was sitting, and made the man jump up and slam his head. He then came out of the playland yelling at my dad. He then proceeded to leave the McDonald's with no daughter of his own in sight. This may not have been the scariest thing ever, but it's scary to think what the man's intentions were. It scares me to think that he might have taken photos of me or my sister. When my dad told me this story, I just laughed my ass off because of how my dad made this guy slam his head. But after some deep thought, I'm thoroughly creeped out. This happened about a year ago in my first semester of college. I went to an art school in New York City and my sweet mates and I had a craving for fast food at around 12.30am. We decided on the McDonald's down the street because we're classy as fuck. It was me, my sweet mate Kat, and her boyfriend Tom. We ordered our food. Kat and I decided to split a shit ton of chicken McNuggets and pick a table by the door. Tom and Kat are sitting next to each other, holding hands as couples do, and I'm sitting there being the awkward third wheel and gorging myself on nuggets. In walks a slightly disheveled gentleman who starts to wander aimlessly in the direction of the register. We think nothing of him. I watch as he goes to order his food and turn back to my friends to chat. Suddenly, Kat mutters, Anna, behind you. So I turn around, and there's the slightly disheveled gentleman again. This time, he's holding a flashlight. I turn back around to Cat and shrug, figuring it's just some harmless weirdo. I feel a tap on my shoulder to turn. I turn around again, and the guy asks, The light isn't working in the men's room. Can one of you hold this flashlight while I use the toilet? Uh, seriously? Cat being the nicest and most outgoing person of the group responds first. Uh, maybe you tell an employee that the lights don't work. I bet they could figure it out for you. It'll only be a minute. The guy mutters and holds the flashlight out to us. Could one of you just hold this while I pee? He insisted. Tom answered next as I was determined to ignore the man. No, just go ask an employee to fix the lights. But I'll only be... The man began again but I interrupted him with a firm, fuck off. It was a weird situation made only weirder when, as we were leaving, Kat said, He never went to the bathroom in the first place. How would he know the lights didn't work? When 
When I was about six or seven, I used to take swimming lessons in a local pool after finishing school twice a week on Wednesday and Fridays. On Fridays, mum would take me into McDonald's to get a milkshake as a treat afterwards. I'd sit and drink my shake, then we'd head home, no problems. This day was different. I'd finished my shake and wanted the toilet before we left. So in I went, into the ladies on my own as I usually did. I noticed one cubicle was locked and thought nothing of it. Went in the second, did my thing, flushed and noticed that the person in the other cubicle was unlocking the door too. I hadn't heard them flush. I turned around, and it was a man. Old, disgusting, and tall. Why was he there? I innocently said, This is for ladies only, mister. And he said, Why do you think I'm in here, little girl? It's music to my ears. Where is your mummy? He took a few strands of my hair and twirled them between his grim fingers and reached a hand to grab me by the shoulder. I shook out of his grip and ran as fast as I could back to my mum, crying. I told her what happened. She told an attendant, but by the time they checked he'd managed to slip out unnoticed and into the busy street. I hope he never managed to get his hands on any little girls ever again.